This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, in this video, I want to talk about 10 really important things for every web developer to learn things that, that I feel are really important, regardless of what language you specialize in or what framework or anything like that. Um, specifically, full stack developers. So, we're going to look at some things like technologies, concepts, practices. Um, certain functionality aspects that you're going to need to know regardless of, of what you're you're specializing in. All right. So let's jump in and take a look. All right. So the first one is pretty much the, the most obvious one, and that's the fundamentals, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. These are the, the, the three building blocks of the web, really, of at least the front end. Um, so HTML, CSS, you're going to need to be able to, to build and work with interfaces. If you're a full stack developer, you will be working with the front end. As far as JavaScript goes, If you're going to specialize in JavaScript, like let's say become a, a mean stack or Mern stack developer, you're going to really need to deep dive into JavaScript. That's going to be your, your main language on both the front end and the back end. If you're going to be a, let's say a Python developer or ASP.net, if you're going to specialize in something like that, it's still important to at least know the basics of JavaScript, how to manipulate the DOM and stuff like that, because you will need some dynamic functionality within your interfaces. So you do need to at least learn the basics of JavaScript. So the next one is Git and GitHub and Git is a, a version control system. It's one of a couple version control systems that are out there, but it's definitely the most popular. And if you get a job at a company, there's a huge chance that you're going to need to use Git. So it's something that you definitely need to learn. You can pick it up pretty quickly. I do have a, a like a 40 minute crash course on YouTube that you can check out where you learn about 90% of what you'll be doing, which is cloning, pushing to repositories, making pull requests, merging branches and stuff like that. And then GitHub is just a service that you can push your Git repositories to to basically host your code. And it's, you know, used for collaboration and stuff like that. So number three is Chrome dev tools. I should say browser dev tools because I, not everybody uses Chrome. You should, but not everybody does. <laughs> um, but there's there's a lot that you can do with the dev tools. There's different tabs. You have the elements tab where you can view and edit your HTML and CSS right in the browser. You can view computed CSS, stuff like that. Then you have your console, of course, where you track your JavaScript errors, your front end JavaScript errors and warnings, console log, do debugging through the console. You have your application tab where you have all your browser based storage like local storage, caching, service workers. If you're dealing with PWAs, you have your network tab, which is very important because it basically shows everything that happens with every request. It shows the response. It shows any status codes, all the files that were loaded, the time that it takes the files to load. So very important to understand the, the data tab in the Chrome and the dev tools, uh, especially for full stack developers. So the next one is consuming an API. So basically dealing with third party data. And I'm actually going to put a, a link in the description to an awesome GitHub repository that just has a shitload of, of APIs that you can work with. And uh, they'll give you a bunch of project ideas as well. In fact, I've used many of them for tutorials on this channel. Some are, are advanced APIs where you need like token authentication and stuff. And some are just open data APIs. So what I mean is using, for instance, fetch or Axios or if maybe if you're an angular developer, you can use the, the built in HTTP uh, client or if you're using Python or PHP, you can use some kind of client within within those languages. But just the ability to deal with an API, fetch the data, um, make post requests, put requests. It's really important to understand HTTP verbs and how they work, as well as HTTP status codes. Which kind of brings us to the next one, which is building a REST API and dealing with CRUD, which is create, read, update and delete. So instead of con just consuming the API, now you're building it. And usually you're going to work with some kind of database. So you need to learn how to connect to a database, how to make queries, get data, how to insert data into the database. 
Um, and this could be a REST API. You could also build a, just a CRUD application with server rendered templates. But basically, you need to know how to connect an application to a database. And it could be MongoDB, MySQL, Postgres. I'm not really specifying you know, any, any certain framework, language, database. That's up to you. Uh, but these are just some generalized things that you need to do and, and need to learn. All right, so next we have authentication, which is obviously very important. Most web apps that have any kind of functionality are going to have authentication. It's important to track your users. If, if users are allowed to create resources like blog posts or whatever it might be, uh, it's important to know which user created which resource. Uh, and it's important to block certain pages for people that aren't logged in. So authentication is, is obviously huge in, in any kind of application development. And there's different ways to do it. It depends, kind of depends on what you're using. If you're using, let's say, React on the front end and Node and Express on the back end, you might use JSON Web Tokens, which uh, is kind of like a, like a stateless way to authenticate. Um, you might use cookies, sessions. Uh, PHP sessions are really popular. You have OAuth, so you can use third-party systems like Google or Twitter or GitHub to log in. So there's a lot of different ways to authenticate, but uh, it's, it's definitely a very important step in becoming a full-stack developer. So next we have MVC or Model View Controller, which is a design pattern, and a lot of the higher-level frameworks like Django, Laravel. Uh, Adonis are built on MVC and then of course you can create your own your own um, structure MVC structure I actually have a PHP course on, on Udemy where we create an MVC framework but basically it's model view controller and there's a lot of iterations of it for instance Django is actually an MVT framework model view template because instead of actual controllers that controller logic actually goes in the view and then it uses templates it renders templates but if you understand MVC it's really easy to understand different iterations of it and just to give you a quick rundown the model is is you know your database um, interactions so when you query data or you insert data into the database that's usually the model logic then you have the view which is just that it's what the user sees it could be a server rendered template it could be something like react a lot of the time a lot of times you'll hear that react is the v in mvc uh, which is pretty much the same for any front end library or framework controller is like the the director of it all or the the traffic controller where it takes a request and then decides what to do whether it's you know get some data load the view load some data within the view so it kind of controls that through whatever route is hit So MVC is an uh, important step, an important thing to learn in full stack development. So next we have problem solving and searching. If you become a developer, you probably have some natural problem solving skills. It's important to, to, to build on that through projects, through algorithms, challenges, stuff like that. Searching, uh, you're always going to be searching for stuff. I don't care if you're a, a developer for 20, 30 years, you're still going to be searching. Even stuff that I've, I've done for years, I still have to search sometimes for the exact syntax. And then, of course, you're going to get strange errors and error codes that you need to look up. So, you know, Google and Stack Overflow are, are going to be two of your best friends if you're a developer. So next we have writing tests, and this is this is probably where I lack the most. Um, tests can kind of seem a little useless, and in in some cases they are useless for small applications. You really don't need to do this, um, but when you're building a large production application, it's it's nice to to have unit tests and other types of tests because it just helps make your whole process more robust. Your debugging is easier. It saves problems in the long run. And uh, it might seem like a waste of time at first, but it can actually save you time in the long run. So definitely something you want to look into. And then lastly, we have DevOps and deployment. So DevOps is really a kind of a blanket term, and there's a lot to it. There's there's DevOps engineers that specialize in it. As far as being a developer, it's more about the deployment, the maintenance, the scaling that you want to kind of learn about different platforms like AWS, uh, although AWS is, is really like um, enterprise level for large applications. I'm not a big fan of it. I, I rather deal with something like DigitalOcean, which is um, 
basically just empty empty Linux containers or droplets where you can install whatever you want, any language you want, any frameworks, any uh, servers, Nginx, Apache, and then you can, you know, run your server from there. You also have platforms like Heroku, which make things a little easier because you just add some configuration, push your files, and it kind of does everything for you. For static sites, you have like Netlify, which is an awesome service where, you know, you can actually create serverless functions and they have form submission uh, features and stuff like that. You also have cPanel hosting, which is good for like PHP and WordPress. So there's a lot of different choices out there. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Uh, I, I would just say pick a process to really, um, you know, when you build an application, you want to be able to push it to production really quickly and, and easily. So just figure out that process. All right, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and, and took something from it. I think these 10 things are just crucial in becoming a full stack developer. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.